hello. I don't know why that was, my audio was muted, but that's okay. Hopefully you can hear me now. Oh wait, hello. Um, welcome, what I was just saying is um, thank you all for being here. I'm really sorry about all the spam we do. My husband and I do our best to try to mitigate the spam. Hopefully none of you have clicked it. Um, and yeah, we're just here. We're gonna have a good time and paint. I know a lot of you um, have kids with us, so definitely leave a comment below if you're painting with your kid or your grandkid or um, or friends across states. Um, I love it when I hear that people are painting and zooming um, with their friends and everything, and it's it's really fun. So uh, I love that you're here and that we get to paint together. So I'm just going to. Um, we have a lot of people here. I know there's a lot more RSVPs, so um, hopefully they will find us and we can get started. For those of you who have been with us for a couple, you probably noticed the a lot better quality um, of a picture. My husband and I ended up investing in a camera, so hopefully you all have better quality and, I don't know if you can tell, but I can zoom now. Fancy is that. So now when we work on specific parts and you need to see up close, I can zoom in and fill you in and all. Um, hello, hello. So my comments are over here. So if I'm ever looking over here, it's because I'm reading your guys' comments. Mother and daughter, just you. That's great. Ten-year-old daughter, nine-year-old daughter. Yay. I love, I love, love, love when kids get to paint with us. And then also by you letting me know that kids are painting with me, sometimes I can... Um, Sometimes I just change my um, wording to make it a little bit more accessible to everyone and not just the adults. Um, so that is very helpful. And somebody says, I have a question. If you guys have questions at all throughout this entire process, please, please let me know. Put in a comment um, and hopefully I will be able to get to it, okay? Um, where am I at? Is that directed towards me? I'm in San Diego. Um, so I am on the West Coast. Mother and daughter, yay. Hello, hello. All right, so we're going to go over some of the supplies real quick. Um, I have my brushes. So for anyone who's been painting with me and knows, I also posted it. Um, I have a brush kit. Um, it has a, um, a bunch of different sizes and different um, types of brushes. That's really helpful um, from everything I've used for it. Uh, with it, it's pretty good quality. Um, it, obviously, it's not the best on the market, but it's very, I feel you get your bang for your buck because it also comes with a sponge, um, just a round art sponge, and then it also comes with a palette knife, which we will be using in the next couple um, classes. So definitely, if you haven't gotten that, it's definitely helpful to have that. Um, and that's what I'll be using, painting with my daughter-in-law. <laughs> Yay. Um, sending hugs. Awesome. Okay, so we have our brushes. Um, yeah, so I will, um, that link for that is in the description of the event. I will also link it below for those who are watching the live replay. And then I also have these sponge daubers. Now these ones are really redded out and bunched up <laughs> because these are actually my sons. I couldn't find mine. I searched the house and I was like, where did these go? But that's okay. These will still work. Anything, honestly, any sponge, like you'll see that this is still pretty round and it's still intact. So that's the part that I'm going to be using, even though this is kind of beat up. Um, my son does water painting on the uh, the asphalt. So um, even though these are beat up, they will still work. Okay. So even if you have ones that may not look great, or even if they have a nick out of the out of the top of it, it's still going to work because they are going to be going in circle. So eventually it'll come full circle and it'll be fine. Okay. Um, if you don't have sponges, um, I will be teaching... Um, how to do it the brush way it just it's not as effective and it takes longer so just know that I will teach that it's just not as effective um, and you may have to finish that portion of it after we're done with everything else so don't fret if you don't have sponges I'll teach you the other way um, but you may have to finish the background after we're done with the rest of it and you can do that after class is done um, and that would be totally fine okay a lot of mother-daughter painter, painters today. That's great. So just continuing um, continuing with the, the supplies. So we have the brushes, we have the sponges. Again, I will teach you um, the other way. 
and then um, obviously our paint. Um, somebody asked what specific paint I'm using. I'm just using Master's Touch. Um, I think it's the Hobby Lobby brand, but I'm, I also use Basics, um, and which you can find anywhere. Um, and yeah, so it's the full body. So it's not the craft paint. It's not the ones you come in the little bottle. Um, it's the full body acrylic. If you do have the craft acrylic paint, um, that is totally fine. You can use that. Just know that it might be more see-through than what I'm using. And also when I say to add water to something, don't because your paint is already in a very liquid consistency. Whereas my paint is going to be very thick and I need to water it down to make it more like your consistency. Um, so just try to listen to what I'm saying and why we're adding water. Um, don't just add water, okay? So hopefully that helps. Um, what if I use household sponge? Great question. So on on the um, on the event page description, I do have a video linked um, of how to make them. Essentially, you can grab a household sponge and cut it in a circle, cut it in a few different sizes, and that will work. Because again, we, it doesn't need to have the stick, it doesn't need to have anything. The only thing we're using is this very edge of it. Um, so even if you don't have all this stuff, that's okay. So I would just say, if you wanted to cut up your sponge, um, your, your household sponge, totally do that. Just draw a circle, it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, round. Um, and cut it and then you can you can hold on to like the green side or whatever color it is um, and twist it with that. So I think my my mother-in-law is doing that. Um, all right, I think that's all of the supplies other than like your water and your um, your paper towels. That's all the supplies. Um, and then I'm using a an 11 by 14 canvas, uh, which sides and everything. You can use whatever you want. Um, it does not have to be this size. It can be a very thick piece of cardstock for all I care. Um, but it's it's whatever you want to do. Um, do know if you are using cardstock, use less water because sometimes that can um, mess up the painting. But um, for canvases, I'm using 11 by 14. Uh, it can be an 8 by 10, a 9 by 12. It can be a panel. It can be a canvas pad. Um, whatever you have, okay? We have a hair roller sponge, if that works. A hair roller sponge. Are those like the sponges and then they have like the plastic around that you can take off? Because if that, if it's like flat and round, go for it. Um, and theoretically, if you if you like rinse it out, like right after you're done, then you can use it for your hair too. <laughs> um, it doesn't necessarily need um, to even be thrown away after. Um, 8 by 10 is great. Well, we need a hair dryer. Uh, no, no. All my classes we, we do within... Um, a two-hour span, so things have um, time to dry. We're using acrylics, not oil. Oil needs a lot of time to dry. Acrylics don't, so that's what we're going to be using today. Okay, um, so that's all of the supplies. Um, as for a, a few announcements, I have, so I did mention in the description of the event um, or in the, the discussion of the event that um, I will be donating any uh, donations or tips that I received for my last class and this class during December. Um, to the LPA community for the San Diego chapter. For those of you who don't know, my daughter had, has dwarfism, um, which is a chondroplasia, and um, she, the, the community has just been really helpful for us, and I wanted to give back this Christmas. So, um, so anything that you want to give, you don't have to give, but if you want to give, um, I will be donating all of that for um, that community and the LPA chapter. Um, for San Diego, um, all of my um, all of my tip jar information is over um, on your right hand side, so the Cash App or the Venmo, um, if you wanted to give. And then um, another way to give is um, I also have a Patreon. Um, so if you like these classes and you want more than just the free live classes, I do have a Patreon, um, which I do classes every other week. Um, and you can get more content there. So there's also an option. And somebody asked in my messages why I do these for free. Honestly, you guys are the reason I do for free. So you being here and helping and painting along with me helps me watching the YouTube videos. Um, tips are always welcome, but they're not necessary. So just being here um, is helping me and I love doing it. So. Um, those are kind of the announcements. I do not have Zelle. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, I think those are all the announcements. I will, I think we're ready to get started. Okay, so we are using um, three colors for the background, okay? So we have our blue, I'm using phthalo blue. So I have my phthalo blue. If you wanted to use a lighter blue for kind of around the white, you can, um, but it's really not necessary. You can paint this whole thing with just the three colors um, of just the white, the blue, and the black for the background at least. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my paint. And I'm using this fancy, I don't know, you guys can't really see it because it's, um, so I have this palette, I actually got it for Christmas from my husband. I'll leave a link in the um, in the description if you want to get it. Um, but it uh, apparently it cleans really well. I'm really excited to have a larger palette, um, and especially for when we're doing when we're doing palette knives or anything that needs a flat surface. Um, for those of you who have painted with me before, I usually use the round palette with the little um, pots in it, and you can't use that with a palette knife. Um, so having a flat surface is really helpful. Sorry for the loud clicking of the of the acrylics. Um, is it all right to use a black canvas? You can use a black canvas, um, but you'll just have to make sure that you use enough paint for around where it's white um, and the bottom, just so that the black doesn't see through. But honestly, it's yeah, you can, you can. Um, let me just real quick. Um, go through some of these. I think I missed a lot of. If you had a question, feel free to re ask it if I didn't get to it because there's a lot of comments. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. And yeah, for those of you who want more information on the LPA community and things like that, I did leave a link um, in the post that I made on the actual page, um, on the event page. I think it was like one of the first posts I made. Um, okay, uh, in the kit that I have for my brushes, I'm going to be using a, um, a three-quarter inch, it's the largest filber flat brush, okay? That's what I'm going to be using. You can use a large one inch or a wash or anything like that. You can. I've, I tend to like the filbers because it doesn't leave hard edges when we're painting, um, but any, any large, um, large one will do, okay? So we're going to go ahead and grab some water. Um, colors I added to my palette. I added phthalo blue, which is just a dark blue. I tend to like the phthalo blue because it kind of has a hint of green in it, and I like teal, so I tend to use that more often than not. Um, so I added my black, my um, teal, or my, sorry, my phthalo blue, or dark blue, and then my white. Um, they all look black right now because it's dark, but I'm going to be using the white real quick. Um, I grabbed a, lot, a little bit of water. Um, for those asking if I can type all the supplies, all of the supplies are in the description of the event. Okay, so, um, which I did leave a link for the um, event in the top of this post. Um, or if you're already on the event, you can just scroll down. All right, so in this general area, and if you wanted to, you could just real quick, if you, let's see. Um... If you want, you can do a little uh, line across just so you know where your snow is, um, which I just put like the tiniest bit of blue on the white that was already on my um, on my brush, just to get just so that you guys can see it. Um, but essentially, what I'm doing is I'm getting my white and I'm just putting that all in the middle. You're not going to see it right now, but that's okay. We want something for the other color for the blue to blend into, okay? So we're just going to cover this whole space with white, and I had a little bit of water on my brush, and the water is to make sure that it is, um, the consistency is so that I can move the paint a little bit better. If you're using craft paint, you probably won't need to do this. Like you won't need to add water to it. So now that this whole area, I'm going to go ahead, now that this whole area is filled with white, I know you can't see it, neither can I, but I know it's there. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of blue and mix that in with a little bit of white. So then I kind of have this like lighter blue in, on my brush. And I'm seeing someone frozen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much those colors. Um, for someone, uh, I think it's Cody is saying slow down. Thank you. Um, oftentimes I will be painting and I don't know when everyone is falling behind because I can't see you. Um, when I'm doing my classes in person, I can see what you're doing. I can see, um, I can see what I'm doing. I can see what you're doing. Um, and I can see where you're at and I can kind of gauge what I'm teaching. Here I can't do that. So if I'm going too fast um, or you need more time for something, please just let me know um, and I can either help you or slow down, anything like that. Um, with, with that said, the background, in order to get a clean um, in order to get a clean gradient, we do have to do this when it is wet. Um, so I'm going to be teaching what I'm doing. As I'm going and then after I'm done if you guys still need help I will I will come and help you um, not come and help you I will read your comments and help you um, so for this um, if you end up bringing the blue in too much just come back with your white and as you move away from the center you want to start going in a circle with your strokes so let me let me just Yes, the brush is a filber. There we go. I can make it focus. There we go. My brush is a filber. So it's just a big um, flat brush, but it's like oval on the top. Okay, so as we're going here, I'm just slowly going and brushing. I'm, my brush strokes are going in the direction of the circle as I move out. And so now I have that. So now I can go with a little bit of water. I can go with my dark blue a little bit more into the white. So it's not quite the darkest, but it's like the next stage essentially. So you're just going to keep doing that. Um, as we go. So right here you'll see that this is not um, this is not blended. I'm not going to bring that in but I'm just going to go over it a few times. So what happens is when you're when you're brushing the more you go over something when you're trying to blend the more it'll the more it'll blend. So I'm just going to go over this a few times and kind of bring bring out the the white that's already on the canvas like that. And I can come back in with a little bit of white and slowly blend that. Alright, so I have a few people saying for me to slow down. Um, okay, so I started with the white. I put the white over this whole section. Then I grabbed a little bit of blue and mixed it with my white. Okay, I mixed it with my white so it's a light colored blue. And then I added that all around the white and then slowly just mixed it together. Um, so again, the more you go over a section with your brush, the more it's going to blend.
Again, if you are wanting this to be blended, it's easiest to do it while it's all wet. So if I slow down too much, everybody else who is caught up is going to have a hard time blending. Um, so if you, if you are at where I'm at um, and you want to move on, you can. It's the same process throughout the whole thing. So let me just, um, because we have so many people in the class, I do need to um, just, I need to be able to teach everyone, um, even those who are still going. What about the part where there's dark blue on the side? Okay, so essentially you're going to do the same thing. Um, for those who, who need me to reiterate something, um, who are a little bit behind, I can always um, reteach it and explain it a little bit more. So as we're moving on, you're just going to grab a little bit more blue. And then you're going to mix it with the light blue. Now for me, I know that I know that this has already dried. Um, so for for this part, um, I will I will help everyone else who's who's already dried as well. Um, and yes, for anyone who who is um, too far behind um, and doesn't think that they they can keep up with the class, that's totally fine. Um, I do have the replay, so you can stop it, you can skip ahead, um, and so for anyone who knows that they paint um, on the slower side, there's no there's no harm in that. There's that's totally okay. You know, like you're allowed to paint at your own pace. Um, but for the live classes, because I do try to keep it in a certain amount of time, I do have to go a certain speed. I mean, I can slow down, you know, a little bit for everyone. Um, but when it comes to teaching a certain technique and things like that, um, for instance, being able to get a very fluid background, I can only slow down so much because then it, I can't teach the technique. Does that make sense? So absolutely, I would like to slow down for everyone. But in order to teach the technique, I do need to keep a certain pace. And hopefully, hopefully that's understandable. Um, but if this has already dried, essentially what you're going to do, you're going to put the darker tone here, and then you're just going to remix whatever tone you need to go back and do. So I'll, I'll show you in a second when I get there. Um, do you wash the brush before doing the blue? No, I don't because I'm going to use the white um, that's on my brush and I'm also using um, I'm using the blue that's on my brush to mix in to all the other colors. If I'm going to go from a dark blue to a white, then yes, I will want to brush um, rinse my brush. I'm sorry for my head. I always forget to do this side because I can't see it. And then it's unpainted. Okay, so now that we're over on this side, um, I'm watching now, I'm painting later, beginner, so I'm slow. And that's okay, if you're a beginner and you're slow, watch the replay there's no harm in that okay and you can still ask questions most of the time I'm I'll still like you know be there or it might be answered <laughs> um question Unker has a question what is your question Unker okay so as we get to this part I'm going to have a little bit of water with my with my color I'm going to put the darker shade first Okay. Do I paint the whole canvas white? Um, no, it's just this section, just where it's going to be whiter, whiter. So I'm putting this darker color here, and now I'm going to mix a little bit of white into my brush, and I'm going to start mixing in long, big strokes, and I'm almost, I'm almost that color. I can come back in with a little bit more white. 
a little bit more water. And again, this isn't the ideal way to do it because typically when I when I do um, when I do really gradient um, backgrounds, I will do it all at one time, and it won't have time to dry before I move to the next color. Um, but sometimes when I'm teaching, um, we'll move at a slower pace, so sometimes it's harder. Um, so now that's got a pretty good gradient. I am going to go in with a little bit more white and a little bit more water just to try to mesh this together a little bit better. And if you need to go back over this like white part again, you can. Um, what do you do if one of the sides is thicker than the other? You mean like with the paint? Or one of the one side is thicker than the other. I'm not sure what you mean. So I just went in to um, kind of recolor the white part because this part was dry and I brought the blue in too much. So I just grabbed some white did right there and then I um, grabbed a little bit of water and kind of help to help mix it. And then so now what we did right here to mix into this blue, we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to take a shade darker. So pretty much just the, the dark blue with not really anything else in it. How much, oh uh, wait, how much it has spread and has spread too much? How much has it spread? I'm not sure I understand. What do I do if one side is thicker than the other? How much it has spread and has spread too much? Like it's like the the paint itself is like thin. So I'm just taking my white um, and blending it into the blue that I had just put on my canvas. If it's, yeah, I would say either you have too much water. Can you see, if you can see like every stroke you do, you probably have too much water. So when I say um, I'm like dipping my, my brush in water, it's not like the whole thing. I'm just, I'm just dipping like the tip of it in there. Um, I'm not using water because it's craft. Um, some paint, are you, are you saying because it's like, it might be, be translucent? Because if it's translucent, it might just be the paint that you're using. Um, sometimes craft paint, it just doesn't have the opacity um, that other other paint does. Um, and if that's the case, then add white to it because that'll make it a little bit more opaque. Okay, so for those of you who are at my my pace. Once you get to here, you're just going to keep doing the same thing except with black now. So we went from white to blue. You're going to do the same thing except with blue to black. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to slow down for those who are a little bit um, behind. Because um, I do I do want I do want everyone to be painting with us, not just the ones who can keep up. Um, what do you do with the other blue? Are you talking about the lighter blue that I suggested earlier? If you had, um, that was just a suggestion if you wanted to do, if you're not used to, um, like, 
mixing and things like that, you could use the lighter blue and then go into the darker blue and then the black, um, but I didn't use it. You don't need to use it. Um, it was just an option for those who wanted to use two different blues. I'm going to fix, while I'm waiting, I'm going to fix the tone on my camera. It looks a little yellow, yellowish. Um, what should I do if I can't blend the paint? Um, you can't blend the paint. Um, either it's dried too much or you need a little bit of water. So try adding either more paint, more water, because um, it might just be that it's dried too much. Uh, what do we do with the black? The black you're going to do just like you did white to blue. You're going to do the same thing of blue to black. Um, I can do it really quickly, but I, I want to wait until um, a couple of other people have caught up with me. Um, but if you want to go ahead, you totally can. Um, so it's, it's the same process, just white to blue. From here, you're going to do blue to black. So you'll have the dark blue, you'll add a little bit of black, and then the next layer is a little bit more black, and then you'll have put pure black on the, on the end. Um, will these colors fill up the rest of the background? We're just doing the top of this, okay? Um, let's see, move on here. Um, so we're just doing the sky. The rest of this is going to just be white. Um, I have a light blue in the middle. Should I add more white? In the middle of what? You have a light blue in the middle here? Then yes, I would add more white. Better. A little better. Um, with the big circle in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Um, what if I painted too much of the canvas with the big circle in the middle? Um, it. I mean, you're talking about the the white part. It can be the white can go out further. It doesn't. This does. It's just the background. So understand that this is just the background. We're going to be putting snowflakes and little sparkles. Um, and then obviously the, the main part of this is our little snowman. That's the last thing we're going to be doing. So, um, thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie says, I know you're getting a lot of slow, slow down comments, but I wanted to make sure you knew that you were doing great and I'm loving this and following along easily. Thank you. I really appreciate that comment. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to keep going because I know a lot of you are on the same pace as I am. And I'm trying to balance um, people who are a little bit slower and people who are a little bit further ahead, and that's totally okay. Um, that's just kind of the the game of it. So I'm going to take some of my blue and a tiny bit of black. Black does take over your color. So when I say a tiny bit, I mean like a little tiny bit. Um, I'm going to put it over here because it is already really dark. Um, so I had a little bit too much black, which is why I started it over here because I thought it might. And if you'll notice, I am going over this, this line right here um, because I want it to go, I just want it to go past, all of this is going to be covered up. So... So then I'm going to go into a little bit more of my blue. Uh, your speed is good. I'm fine. Great. Um, all right. So for those of you who are want to watch this later, um, which is totally fine, you can totally do that. Um, I the class will be available on the event immediately after it's done. Um, but if you want to um wait until Wednesday I will put a edited version kind of taking out all of the parts that slow it down um I will be I will be uploading that um on the Wednesday following the event so this coming Wednesday um so that'll go up on Wednesday if you wanted to Watch. Obviously, you can watch the actual live replay on the event until then, um, but you can always wait. 
and that's and that goes for um, all of my classes. All of my free classes are available on the Wednesday following um, on my YouTube. So if you um, are not subscribed to my YouTube, I also post other videos on there as well. Um, I do speed paintings, um, and I have a vlog if you want to follow my art journey. Um, but that's all on my YouTube. Um, after the first coat of blue, do you use a darker blue or a lighter one? After the first coat of blue, the first coat like over here, or just, so I have, this is all one blue. So I have the white going into the blue, um, and then I go, I keep adding blue until I'm using only the blue. And then after that, I start adding a little bit of black. Hopefully that's understandable. And don't forget, if you have, I always do this. I hate it when I do this. But look at this. I forgot to paint the top. If you have side tops and bottoms of your canvas, if you didn't tape them off, don't forget, you got to paint those, okay? I'm just going to try to move backwards with my colors. It's always so hard to do. Now my dark blue is not mixed with the light. The light or the white? My dark blue is not mixed. Is not mixing with the with the light blue. Um, so let's say you got to here and it's not mixing because this part was already dried. You just need to add whatever this color was. So I started here with the dark blue, started adding more of the the pure blue because I wanted to go back to here. So if it's not mixing here, which is what I need to do, I'm going to be adding a little bit of white to mix that. A little bit of water. And again, this is just the background. Like, I know a lot of you are like, oh, it's not mixing, it's not mixing, but like, we're going to be covering up a lot of this with our snowflakes and other things that we can, like, if you don't like a certain part of it, just cover it up with snowflake. And um, boop, it's gone. What is your YouTube call? Um, Samantha Anderson Artist. So YouTube, all of my things, with the exception of my Instagram, which is Samantha Anderson Artist SD, all of my things on my Patreon, my YouTube, it's all whatever it is, like YouTube slash Samantha Anderson Artist. Thank you for asking. And for those wondering, when we do get um, when we do get to the snowman, you can change the color of the mittens and the scarf. So it can be whatever colors you want. I will probably do like a purple or pink because I feel like that today. Um, so uh, let's see. Do you just do the same blue and make it darker? Yes. So I have one blue. I have I have white. I have black, and then I have blue. So the blue over here is the same blue that I have over here. It's just mixed with white or black. It's the same blue. You just have to mix it. Um, my horizon line is slanted. Should I fix it? Not right now. That's okay. Um, you can fix it when we put the white snow all over the bottom. Okay. So, um, yeah, like I have some pieces up here that were above. I'm just going to be raising my, um, I'll be raising my horizon line and to fix it. And that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, I know we have a lot of kids here. I'm sorry that you guys had to wait. Um, we do have kind of like some housekeeping stuff. Um, and we kind of have to wait. I know that, so there's a certain level, I'm going to go ahead and do the black right now. Um, but there's a certain level of like confidence that kids have. So like this, the littler kids will just like blaze through everything and they're like ahead and they're just like, they, they, it's not that they don't care, they're just like excited and that's to that is great. And they're, but they go, they go faster than I do. They like get ahead and they go faster than I do. Um, and then, and then there's others who reach a certain age that like go so slow because they want everything to be like 
so perfect and it's 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 great um but it's um i don't know it's fun kids are fun so right now i'm just doing i'm doing the black and then i'm going to grab a little bit of blue and mix it in with that dark the darkest blue that i have my daughter's with me she's 10. yeah um Okay, I'm also reading. Will the left side graduate to a straight up and down or continue circular? Um, it. I mean, it's up to you. It can be circular. Honestly, it gets to the point where it's black and you can't really see detail. So, well, this thing is my face. So essentially, I'm just painting my the side of my canvas just pure black because that's the, that's what's over here, and I'm not even worrying about the bottom because that's just all going to be white when we get there, which is what's next for the most part. Grab a little bit. Oh, that was my daughter. She was way faster than me. Yep. Yep. Yeah, their age. I've just, the many paint nights that I've done with kids, um, some are so much faster and then others are so much slower. I mean, I guess that's true with like, you know, adults too, but I find it more exaggerated with kids. Okay. So that's my that's my my black and my my bluish. Um, if it is a bit dry, is it okay if we use water instead of more paint? If you're using craft, um, if it's dry, I would use paint um, because water is going to dilute it and it's not going to Part of doing the wet on wet technique is both parts, both both parts of paint that you're blending with is wet. By adding wet, if this if this side is dry and this side is wet, adding water to it is only going to make this diluted. It's not going to make the right side able to blend. Does that make sense? Um, so if anything, if it's dry and you add too much water, it's actually going to lift off the paint. So I would definitely suggest using more paint rather than water, even for even for what I'm doing. So like if this was wet, um, I I'm adding more paint. I'm not adding water um, to it. Water helps everything mix together, but it doesn't create um, it doesn't help mixing. It doesn't help to mix if it's already dry on one side. I hope that helps. Um, if it's not working with, with more paint, then you can definitely try water. Um, just in my experience, um, typically doing water helps better. What if I accidentally made the dark blue to black? What do you mean? Um, like toothpick? Why are we talking about toothpicks? Uh, someone had asked if brushes 
the brushes are falling off onto the canvas. Bristles, you mean? Bristles, I mean. Um, what do you do? In that yes, canvas? if bristles are falling off into the canvas, um, use a toothpick to get them off. Um, and typically, yeah, typically that happens if you're using a very low quality brush um, or, if it, or, or like things like from the dollar store or things like that. Um, but yeah, if, um, if you have bristles, just use a little toothpick to pick it up and then take it off with your fingers. Um, can we do a break before the snowman? I mean, I'll be going a little bit slow. We're going to be doing the, the bottom before we get to the snowman. Um, um, and if you do need a break before, um, we'll be, you can always, you can always take a break and then maybe by the time your break is done, um, it'll be on the replay will be done with class and then you can come back and kind of do it at your own pace. At your own pace. Um, maybe dark blue. Yeah, the dark blue, black blue. Um, that's kind of what I did. I used more black than I did in my original. Mostly because I was running out of blue and I didn't feel like getting more blue. But again, this is the background. The, the darker it is over here, honestly, the better you're going to be able to see the... Um, all the snowflakes so it's up to you if you want to fix it I think it's fine um, could I use a small brush to blend the dark colors and the light colors I would say a bigger brush is better um, you have more surface space with your bigger brush um, for it to blend in versus a small brush you don't have that space um, and you'll see more streaky lines versus a blended look Also, yes, my daughter is 18 months. Well, technically she's 18 months on the on the 3rd of January, but that's really close. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go ahead and can I move on? I don't. I wanna. I wanna be sensitive to those who are slower. So let me know if you're ready to move on, and let me know if you're not ready to move on, and then I can get a better sense of where the class is at. Because there is almost 700 people here, and I would like to teach all of you at the same time and not just cater towards, you know, the people who are faster. Too many silly questions. Ah, eh, that's okay. Um, move on, ready, ready to move on, ready to move on, yes, move on, okay. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of move-ons and not a lot of stay. The brush is very dry. What should I do? Um, I also tried water. My, br my, my brush is very dry. Um, for blending, add either add paint or add water. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm out of white, so I'm going to go and grab my white. And actually, so we're going to... A lot of white. Um, we're gonna paint this whole thing white. Now, in the original painting, um, because of the timing of all of this, by the time I was done with this, it still wasn't dry. Um, so then, when I painted this bottom, blue had incorporated into it because of all of this. Right now, this is dry, and that's not gonna be the case. If you do kind of want that blue effect, you will have to add that in manually, and that's because it's not gonna take it from what's on the canvas because it's already going to be dry. Okay, seem a lot of ready. Perfect. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so we're going to take your white. Uh, my, my brush is a little bit wet. I just rinsed it out so I don't have any blue or any black in it. I'm using the same brush, just the silver brush or whatever brush you're using. I rinsed it out. I don't want to ignore the questions. I, I like answering the questions if they're relevant to the class and what I'm teaching. Um, okay, so you're going to take your white. I have a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm just going to paint this whole thing white. Um, the only thing you really need to be um, not careful, um, but that you need to pay attention to, is this top line. Okay, so you'll notice that the top part of all of this, this is the highest point. 
So that's what is going to determine um, where my line is. And again, it is snow, so it does not have to be a perfect circle. It does not have to be a perfect line. So if you're not good at lines, that's okay. <laughs> um, so you can make it bumpy. Um, you can make it as straight as a whistle. That's totally fine. Or you can make it, you can follow the curves of whatever you have. I am using a little bit of water just so that um, it go it flows better. Again, if you're using craft paint, you might not have to do this. Just for everyone using uh, the full body acrylics. I tend to like to have a little bit of color in my snow because it gives the snow um, like movement and depth. If it's just all plain white, then sometimes you, you lose that. Which it looks like for me, my black it wasn't totally dry, so it is pulling a little bit of that, which is fine. That's what I expected. Why are we painting the snow now? Yes, we're painting the snow. I'm adding five layers of blue and one layer of black. Great. Okay, I'm slowly adding a little bit of water um, to help get this line on top of here crisp. It doesn't have to though. Um, in the in the original, I had a a um, sponge which I forgot to list on the um, on the supplies the supply list so I'm opting not to use it um, because it's not there but if you want to what I did on the top of here is I took my sponge and I dabbed it it's not not the dabbers because the dabbers have um, the dabbers have edges so if I wanted to I could use like this part of it because it's like round um, but they, these have edges, so I wouldn't want to use that because it would it would create like round circles, and I don't want that look. But if you have an art sponge and you can take just your art sponge and dab like the top of it, it'll give kind of like that snowy effect. Um, I'm not gonna do it on this one just because not it wasn't listed on the supplies, and now I know that not everybody has that prepared, and that's totally fine. But if you do have it prepared and you want to use it, you can. It's just kind of like an add, it adds like an extra texture um, if you like that sort of thing. And you can add it to the whole thing or just the top. And then I know that we're only using white with maybe another color in there that's kind of mixed in there. Um, but don't forget to paint the bottom. Because I don't know about you, but I can tell an unfinished um, surface, like a you know the canvas essentially, versus like it's painted white. And doing it now instead of later will ensure that it's all blended. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a tiny bit of color while this is still wet. I like the look of having that kind of bluish blackish over here. So while this is still wet, I'm going to add that in.
All right. It adds a little bit of something. Um, can I add some light gray on the snow for sparkles? Um, I would, I mean, if you have color, it doesn't, it doesn't really see in the camera very well. I don't know. My, you'll see, it's not completely white. It's got, it's more white over here because I wanted this to be the, the whitest part. Um, but over here, it's like a little bit more blue and blackish. Um, you could add some, you know, some white spark. Added too much blue to my snow. That's okay. Just go back in with some white. Yeah, as long as it's not yellow. <laughs> Ready to move on. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. Yeah, if you have a brush, um, or if you have a, um, if you have a sponge, feel free to sponge like the top of it and all of it just to add texture, add kind of snow. Um, and yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the background before we put in our snowman. Um, now there's a couple of different ways you could add um, snow and sparkle. Um, I'll teach you all of the ways. Um, so the first thing you can do is add like, have you ever done like a starry effect? Um, where you get like a kind of a frayed old brush or a, or a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. Um, I have one, but it's in the other room. So that's fine, I'm gonna show you the old way. Um, you just have an old kind of brush um, that's, you know, frizzled and um, that works actually really well. Um, so it would also be pretty with iridescent glitter. Oh yeah, for the sake of my kitchen, I'm not going to use glitter, but I have glitter. And for those of you who painted with me um, on the Christmas card uh, tutorial, you'll know that I love glitter. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're a crafty person and you have glitter, um, just put it on a table. And while this white is still wet, just sprinkle some glitter on there, allow it to dry, and it'll be amazing. Going for blue snow, that's okay. Honestly, it's it's reflecting the sky, and it should be blue anyways, right? I'm gonna use green. Green for what? Um. Let's see. Okay, I think. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments. Okay, we're gonna move on. So I'm going to grab my. Um, so the okay. So let me back up. You can do the the starry effect to add snow. Um, you can do. I did little dots. So I took my smallest brush, and um, you'll see the white that's already on here. Um, and I put white on there and I just dabbed it um, and then there's also the sparkles so in the original photo I just did the handle the back of the handle and the sparkles but I am going to show you how to do the starry night effect um, and we'll go from there so we're going to do that first and then we're going to put in our um, our snowflakes with our daubers okay so you're going to grab your whatever brush you're using if you don't have a frayed brush then you can use um, you can just use any other flat brush is fine, or you can use a um, fan brush if you want to. So the consistency is fairly watery, but not not too watery. It does take a little bit of um, practice to get used to how watery it needs to be. Um, so essentially you still want it to be white, so you don't want to be too translucent. Um, if it's too watery, it'll go on there and then it'll drip, okay? Um, but if it's too thick, then you'll splatter just like stringy paint. So there is a fine line between thick and, you know, thin. Um, you can do it in the corner, maybe on the black so that if you don't like it, you can, you can cover it up easily. So this is what it looks like, and it's getting everywhere, but that's okay. I'm 
I'm doing this to try to cover up so <laughs> that it doesn't fling everywhere. Um, but essentially, I'm just... Oh, I think I touched it. It's okay. I'm tapping it. I'm just gently tapping it. You want to make sure that you're not too close to it so that when you tap it, you like bang your brush on the on the um, thing. A toothbrush, yes. A toothbrush is is way easier. So you're just going to mix up your paint and then dip your toothbrush in it. And then just, um, you've probably done this before, but you're just going to fling the bristles on it. Um, you want to be far enough away so that it's not getting, you know, you're not putting in like a galactic, you know, Milky Way. Um, but so try to be a little bit further away. Um. <laughs> okay, so um, again, these can be stars, these can be um, another way of doing your snowflakes. Um, whew, that's a lot. Now that that went everywhere, thankfully it's not because it's diluted. It um doesn't really stick. Okay, so that's your. I think you can see that. Um, they're loving this ladder painting. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of kids here, so they're probably loving that. Um, it is not working. If it's not coming off your brush, it probably means there's not enough water in it. Um. And surgical scrubbies that made perfect splatter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Use whatever you can. Um, I, I tend to like, um, I tend to like toothbrushes because they seem to be the most consistent, um, effect, at least for me. Um, and it's the easiest because the, um, the bristles are so thick that it, it like, it gives a really nice spring action. Sometimes, sometimes this doesn't always work. Um, but it worked pretty well today. So again, it's it's hard for me to be able to teach that specifically because I can't I can't look at the paint that you're mixing and be like, oh no, add a little bit more water or vice versa. So you kind of it's kind of a free for all when it comes to that specific technique. Um, but just practice, you'll get better at it. You'll get better at figuring out what's too too much and what's too little water. Um, but for those of you who didn't want to do that, the next part of this is we're going to be doing our circles. Um, so for those of you that have them and want to do them, I'm going to teach those who have these. And then um, for those who don't, I will be teaching the painting way. Um, so what if we're using two different types of paint together? Does it destroy or something? Um, it shouldn't. If it's all acrylic, it's all water-based, so you shouldn't have a problem. Um, if you are using the craft paint, you will need to add water, I believe. Um, but try it without. It might I feel like it's still on the thicker side, so you might still need water. But I don't. But using two different paints, I think, should be fine. It doesn't destroy. Destroy. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to grab one of my things. Um, again, if, if you have the kit that has like the four different um, sizes, I would use the, the three smallest or the two smallest. Um, but it also depends on the type, the size of canvas. So if you're using a smaller canvas, try to use, you know, maybe the smallest two. If you're using a bigger canvas, you can go up a size. Um, it's all based on what you want. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some. Um, white. I'm not adding any water to it. No water. And I'm going to load my sponge. So how I'm doing that right now is I'm grabbing my sponge and I'm grabbing some of this, pulling it to the side, and then I'm twisting in it. And you'll see even there it's making a nice little circle. See that? So I'm just pouncing barely any anything and then I'm going in a circle and it's giving me a nice little circle okay um so I'm gonna start over let's see I'm gonna start over here all right so you'll notice that looks like a moon okay 
So because when I when I originally did this, this was all still wet. So it was mixing with the colors. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab just a tiny bit of water and you can actually add in some of these other colors so that it's not just pure white. There, that's a little bit better. So I added just a little bit of blue um, and I'm just mixing in. Um, you can for sure do just, you know, pure pure white, that's fine. So you'll see how easy that is. Now I'm doing different pressures. You'll see here that this was a lot of pressure. And this is when I first did it. And then as I kind of went, I started using less and less pressure and it gives it more of like a translucent um, effect. And you can do them over each other. Okay. And I'm just going on, twisting, and pulling off. Um, yeah, you can add teal if you want. Um, I mean, honestly, you can you can do whatever you want. Um, but I would I would probably keep it all within the same um, within the same. Whoops, that was a lot of water. Keep it in the same color wheel. Um, Yes, it is your painting. You can add whatever colors you want. It really is. Um, it does not have to look exactly like my paintings. And honestly, it won't. Like, my painting is not going to look like exactly like the one that I already did. Um, part of that is because the speed in which I'm, I'm painting. I'm painting at a completely different speed, and so the drying times are different, and it's affecting the paint all differently. So even if, if, even if I tried, it's going to be different. So I'm just adding smaller ones. Okay, so now for those of you who don't... Um, yeah, for those of you who don't um, have the sponges, let me go ahead and just teach you um, one way you can do it. Um, I'm going to be using, let's see... I'm going to be using my small silver. You can use a edge. Here. Let's see. I'm going to use a small flat brush. Let's use that. Um, use a Coca-Cola plastic cap. Potentially, yeah. At this point, if you have something that you might think that you think might work, go for it. Um, so I'm going to teach you with this one. So you're going to grab a little bit of paint and you're going to place it and then you're going to go in a circle, okay? So I'm going to put mine right here. I'm going to place it and then go in a circle. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more water. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do another one up here, okay? So, again, this is for people who don't have the brushes. I mean, sorry, who don't have any of the sponges. I'm going to get a brush, place it down, and then go in a circle. It's not going to be a perfect circle, but it'll be close. And if you want it, um, if you want it less opaque, um, you'll just have a little bit less on your brush when you do it. Okay, so hopefully that gives you at least an idea of how you might do it if you don't have the other stuff. You're very welcome, Dottie. And again, for those who came late and didn't have, um, weren't here for the announcements, um, I am giving all of the donations um, and tips to the LPA community. Um, my daughter has dwarfism. Um, she has a chondroplasia, and 
she just with everything that everything extra that comes with that um we wanted to give back this christmas um and the lpa community the san diego chapter has helped tremendously with just advice and all things like that um so we uh, uh we're donating all of the donations and tips that we get from this class and our last class Okay, so I could probably go the next like 20 minutes just doing this. <laughs> so let me know um, if you get to a place and you like it, just put it on hold, stop, be done with it. Um, and um, yeah, and then let me know if you're done so that we can move on. Or I know some of you wanted to take a break. If you want to take a break at this point, you can. Uh, will this be avail available to watch later? Yes, it will be. Um, it'll be available um, immediately after we are done on the event page. It'll also be available um, as a live replay on my YouTube, um, which is youtube.com slash Samantha Anderson Artist. And then I also have all of my um, over on the left hand side of your screen. Um, I have the link tree um, slash Samantha Anderson Artist, and that has my Patreon, my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram. Um, it also has Twitch on there, but we are, I think we're going to be moving away from Twitch because it wasn't working. And also, just as a note, um, for the new year, I will probably be researching some other way to do these live classes. Um, they've been getting a lot of um, because they're a little bit bigger, they've been getting a lot of spam recently, and I really don't want to have to, I don't, I don't want you all to have to deal with that. Um, and it also, um, it's a lot of time for me and my husband trying to delete everything. Um, so for that reason, we will probably be researching, um, potentially doing live YouTube. I'll still have the Facebook events, um, and everything, but it might be just a redirect to a live YouTube video. Um, so keep that in mind for the new year. Um, we'll see. I still have to do some research on that, but, um, yeah, hopefully we can mitigate the spamming and all of that. So, um, okay. Everybody's done. Sherry, unfortunately I cannot do it zoom. There is way too many two people. Uh, there's way too many people to do a zoom class, um, for my free live classes. Um, I do, however, have private. Um, I do private classes for parties and painting parties, birthday parties and everything that are on Zoom, but it's like it's like 20 people max and it's that's a lot more manageable on Zoom. Um, but for my free classes, I, there's too many people. Um, I use stencil brush for my stuff. It's great. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, I think everyone is pretty much done for that, at least everyone who's messaging. We add little pink stars in the white circles. You can add whatever you want. This is your painting. I can't stress that enough. I'm here to inspire creativity, to give you the tools to make a painting. You can do whatever you want and create the painting that you want, okay? So especially for all the kids out there, I know, I know that you're probably wanting to move on and deter and do all sorts of things. Do it. Do it. Okay. So we have that. Um, the last thing that we're going to do to the sky, and you can do this after. Um, I'm going to do a couple right now, but um, just to show you. Uh, but I will probably be doing them after um, once I get my uh, snowman up there. They're just little sparkles. So essentially, let me zoom in here. So you're going to do a, you can do a little dot so you know where you're going from. And you're going to do four little uh like flicks so you can do that um that's number one uh why is the wait why the painting is slow i do not i do i don't know what you mean um let me know what you mean Jeanette. 
Um, so there's that way. So you can do a little four. Or if it's a little bit bigger, let's, let's say you made it too big and you're like, oh, that's a lot bigger than I wanted it to. You can add four little tiny ones and then it's just a bigger star. So um, so try out doing little little tiny stars and if you make one too big, um, you can always add a little bit more detail. So that's that. You can add as many or as little um, as you want. But for right now, because that does take a little bit more time, we're going to be going on and moving on towards the snowman. So go ahead, make sure that all your brushes up to this point are rinsed out. We don't want to leave our brushes in the water because that will loosen up the furl um, and the that will loosen up the glue in the furl, which is this metal piece for those who don't know. Um, and eventually you'll have bristles coming out. So never leave your water, never leave your brushes in the water. Um, and if you're not going to use them for a while, make sure to rinse them out. Also, if you did use, um, if you did use sponges, take the time right now to go rinse them out. Because if, if the paint dries in there, they're going to be really hard to use later. So I'm actually going to go do that right now. I'm going to go rinse out my brushes and I'm going to be back. Bleh. I will be back in uh, just a few minutes, okay? Okay. Let's put this back on. Um, my kid's painting looks like a blizzard and a galaxy. Fantastic. My painting has not dried. If your painting is not, you mean the blue and the black part? If it's not dried yet, that's okay. I did, originally I did this whole piece, like, in the first, I don't know, 15 minutes. And it was all kind of blending with each other, which is totally fine. Um, no, I didn't freeze. I was just, I was rinsing out my brushes. Um, let's see. Yes, if you, uh, yes, for the brush... For these, um, if you use the smallest brush that you have, so for me um, in this kit, I think it's a number two, um, or if you have something even smaller, you can have a liner brush. So if you have a liner brush, these are like one of my favorite brushes. Um, they get real thin at the top. So if you have a, if you have a liner brush, I would say um, use that one because you will get some pretty thin lines. See this? I don't know if you can see that. Look at the difference between... So that's my liner brush, and that's just my typical brush. See how thin that got? So if you have a liner brush, these are amazing, but a small brush will still work. You'll still get the point. I think most of these I did with a small brush, and then I was like, wait, I could be using my liner brush. Um, okay, I think we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead. Um, hopefully everyone is back from rinsing out their, um, rinsing out their sponges. Okay. All right, I'm going to grab my middle silver brush, my medium-sized silver brush. Um, in the kit, this is a number eight. Um, you can use another brush. I tend to like silvers because they're very versatile, and because they're oval on the top, um, I can do a lot of things with. And we will be using the ovalness for this specifically, okay? I'm going to grab my white paint. This is my standard white paint. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water, but uh, not not a ton. I just want to make I just want to make it uh, the paint able to like move on the canvas, but I don't want to make it translucent, okay? So I'm going to place his head like not in the middle cuz I want kind of the like I want essentially his hat to be in the middle. So I'm going to go a little bit below. So first I'm going to create the ball that he's sitting on, essentially like the bottom, the bottom ball, his body. And I'm going to move it over just a little bit. So 
sometimes when I'm painting, because I'm painting at such a side, um, so that you guys can see directly on, um, sometimes my perspective is a little bit off. So. All right. Uh, I think I want him bigger. Okay. Um, so after you get your the bottom body, you're going to add a few little feet. Um, which is, they're almost like little fins. Um, apologize for me being in the middle. It's really hard to paint when you can't see what you're painting, though. All right. Um, all right. Where's this? Okay, hopefully, hopefully everybody, uh, my white is mixing with my blue. Your blue where? Your blue up here? I'm using a number seven brush. Is that okay because I don't have an eight? That's totally fine. Um, okay, so in regards to brush sizes, every brand of brush is going to have a different size equate, um, equating with their brushes. So there's not like an industry, industry standard uh, size for brushes. So if I have this kit and my size is an 8, um, a size somewhere else with a different brand 8 might be a completely different size. Like it might like it might be this size. Like you just never know. So um, for instance, uh, the other brush, the other brush that I had, I think it was like a size 18, but it was this size brush. So just find a small medium filter brush. Um, I only said it was an eight for the people who actually have this kit. Um, I think it's like it fluctuates on Amazon between like four, 14 to 16 or 17 dollars. It fluctuates, but it's around there. I feel like it's a really affordable. It comes with a palette knife and it also comes with a, um, an art sponge. So that, that's why I was saying exactly what size it was. Um, other than that, yeah, just use use a small silver brush that you have. Now white is mixing with the blue in the body. I didn't put any blue in the body. Uh, white is mixing with my blue background. Okay. I mean, honestly, that's okay. We're going to be adding some blue shadows. So you can just paint that. You'll have some shadows and then you can add white for your highlights instead. Okay, it is very confusing. Um, yes. And in the future, I will just reiterate that the size is for this specific kit. Um, I feel like brush sizes are a lot like women's clothes. There's not like an industry standard for, for clothing for women. It's just depending on the brand. Um, could you put the link to the Amazon here in the chat? Yes, I can put the link for that. For the, it's also, there's also a link in the original event as well um, for the brush kit. Can you use my sponge dauber for my snowman's body? You could, um, depending on how big your sponge dauber is, it might be too small though. Um, the biggest sponge dauber that I had is probably like a, maybe half that size. Um, you could do it for the head, probably. Um, and especially if you're like, not good with um if you're not good with circles that's that's probably fine 
Um, I also have a list of all of the supplies that I recommend and use for my classes um, on my website. So over here on the, the left hand side, I have that link, link tree. Um, I also have a link in there that it goes directly to my website and it has, um, it says buy art supplies. Um, and I link everything that I use um, for these classes and everything um, for my brushes. Um, I have recommended other art supplies on there for the daubers, for the all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you're ever interested in what I'm using, definitely click that link, go there. Um, I think my, um, I don't know if my husband's putting it in the chat, but um, if you go on the event, it is on there. I, I did make a post about it. Uh, yeah, so I'm just filling in my little circle for the head. Um, and then I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of blue for the shadow. So just on either side. Here, I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this, this little guy. Um, what are you using to have so much on the screen? That's a great setup. Thank you, Liz. Um, I am using, so I'm using a program called Streamlabs. It allows me to have like a as many like inputs as I want. So I have this camera, which is my web camera, and then we are seeing here. This is my um, my Sony camera. Sony, I think it's an A6000. And then um, down here to your right is just a picture. It's a picture of what I did um, a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> thank you, Faye. Uh, she says, can I just say that you're both great, and I love how your husband supports and helps you with this. I just think it's so sweet. Yes, it is very sweet, and I love you. Um, yes. What was I doing? Okay, so I'm just adding some um, some shadow. I just added the tiniest bit of phthalo blue. I'm using the same blue for all of this because I want to keep it in the same um, color palette. So now you can actually see what I'm doing. Huh? So this is the first time I'm using the... Um, the this camera for my uh, my canvas setup. I used it for the um, the Christmas cards we did, which I I loved how that turned out, and that was great. Um, but this is the first time here, and I love that I get to zoom in um, on things when I'm doing detail. Because before I would like for those of you who painted with me before, I would like pick up the the camera, the webcam, and like try to like hold it close while painting it was a mess I mean it was fine it worked but um oop. just like uh loving the canvas is too wet so I'm waiting to add the snowman okay that's totally fine um You could also add the snowman and then your blue is not dry. How is it not dry? Because that was the first thing that we did. That's weird. Is that weird? Um, I mean, that's fine if you want to wait. I just think that's weird that it's not dry. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and do the hat real quick. Uh, I'm just going to paint the whole hat white and then we're going to add like color on top of it. So on on here, on here, um, and also try not to make the top, the head, um, too far away from the body, but you don't want it too close because we do want enough room for the, um, for the scarf. Started really late. I'm in catch-up mode. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. When it's class ending, uh, we should be done about... 
um, maybe 25 minutes, if that. It just depends on how how everyone. Yeah, use a blow driver. Thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah, use a blow driver, dryer. You're at home. You can do that. Usually in my normal classes, um, in person, when we did those, um, we didn't have blow dryers, so I had to like teach the class like a certain way of letting things dry. Um, okay, so for the hat, I'm just gonna mark kind of where the hat's going. Eh, that's too far up. Let's scratch that. It's too far down. It's Fine, right there. It's about where I want the hat. I'm gonna do a little point, a little triangle on the top. And I'm sorry for all the youngins that are being very patient. Um, and the kids. I know it's hard to wait. Um, are we able to see a live recording because we missed the initial part? Yes you can see the live recording. We're going to be done in um, probably less than a half an hour, um, depending on the speed of everyone. Um, but I try to keep them two hours or less, um, so we should be done at six. Um, and then you can, you can start it then. Okay, so... I guess how it is. Okay. All right. So I have this little guy. Um, now I'm going to put on the little arms, which are essentially just these little guys. Again, I'm using a little bit of water to help it move on the canvas but not so much that it becomes translucent. Looks a little, mine looks a little bit lopsided, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. Looks like he's about ready to hug someone. Uh, can we just use a dabber for the ball on the top of the hat? Use a dabber. Um, yeah, if you have a small one. I don't know where mine went. Mine disappeared. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Yes, you can. Just go like that and move it. Get a fluffy one. Yeah, just make sure to rinse it out after you're done. Rinse it out or keep it wet until you're ready to rinse it out. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much all the prep work. Now we can. The paint is cracking on the canvas. The paint is cracking on the canvas. Where do you live? Is it really dry where you're at? I can't imagine. No, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Okay. Can you zoom out a bit? Yes, I can zoom out. So this is where I'm at. No hugging snowman. Socially distant. <laughs> oh, don't remind me.
tempera paint okay tempera paint is not acrylic paint um tempera paint um the actual word tempera is for um it's like temperate like it's not permanent um and it definitely i don't it's different it's different than acrylic paint um uh i don't have i've never i've, I've I've never painted with it um, because it's not permanent. So if you are using tempera paint, that might be why. Um, um, okay. We do have to keep moving. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my, um, it's really watery, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to let everyone else help you with that because I do need to move on if we're going to be ending in 25 minutes. Um, yeah, I would just look, I mean, if you are using a different type of paint that's not acrylic paint, um, there's a lot of possibilities why it could be cracking. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so now that we have our base, all of this is in white, I'm going to zoom back in just a little bit, um, because this is all in white, now we can start adding in our color, okay, so we have our mittens, let's go ahead and put our mittens in, now you can have this whatever color you want, okay, so, um, if you want... If you want um, it to be purple or pink or yellow or anything else like that, feel free. If you are doing something as bright as yellow um, or a translucent color, like let's say pink, you are going to want to actually paint in anything that you're going to be painting that color. So for instance, I'm using a pink, which can tend to be a little bit more on the translucent side. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in any white piece that I want my... Um, my pink to go. So for instance, I want these little thumbs to come out. So I'm going to put these little thumbs going up because I kind of like, you know, he's asking for a hug. That's kind of how I pictured him, even though we're not allowed to do hugs right now. Um, I'm going to put a little, little thumb there. Okay. And then on the top of the, on the top of the mittens, there's like a little um, you know, the little lip on top of it, so I'm just going to fill that in. Any other color you're using, you most likely won't need to add that. Picture is fuzzy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it's because my face was in it. Um, I'm sorry, what app? Well, I'm sorry to re-ask, what app am I using? I am using Streamlabs. It's called Streamlabs. Um, Streamlabs OBS. Um, so I'm, I am, uh, I'm streaming from Streamlabs to Facebook. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to do, I'm going to do pink because I, I really love this color. It's like this, like, it's called Rogue. Rogue. Um, it's a really pretty dark pink, and I absolutely love it. You're not going to need a lot, so don't put a whole, a whole lot on your palette. But, um, I just put my arms on his head. <laughs> um, well, you could make the hat into another head. And he could be a three-tiered. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my pink. Uh, you can take whatever color you want. Um, and you're going to paint over the white. I'm going to go down to a smaller paintbrush because this one is a little bit too big. Okay. 
Okay, so I've painted in one side. I'm going to paint in the other side. Um, if you, if at any point um, you're waiting for me, feel free to do more stars. I know that we kind of skipped past that um, earlier. Um, and I kind of did that with the intention of giving people something to do while they're waiting around um, for the rest of the class. So if you are waiting at any point, feel free to fill in some of the some of the stars um, and like the sparkly things. Um, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do the, oh honey, it's forced my palette. <laughs> um, do you want the white to dry before you put on the top color? Um, not necessarily. Mine kind of blended in with the white and that's okay. Um, I can always do another coat of white, or I mean, I, I can always do another coat of my color um, if I want it to be more vibrant. But for, for this specifically, I, I don't really care. Um, this is where you get to decide if you want a thick, um, a thick scarf or a thin scarf. And then you're going to come down. Um, so for the scarf, you can do many different ways of doing your scarf. Um, you can do frills at the end. You can just, I kind of just did two big like triangle type ones, um, but you can make this however you want. Um, you can do like thin and wavy like that. I think I might add frills to mine at the end. Do we have to make the scarf the same color? No, you do not. You can pick whatever color you want. I originally did green. Um, I'm doing green pink now. You can do a red and black checkered scarf. You can, I don't know, do, do whatever you want. And I just added, I added some frills on mine. Because why not? Why not? Okay, um, once that dries, you can go ahead and add um, like highlights to it, but that's for later. Um, I meant, do we have to make it, make it the same color as the mittens on the snowman? Like, love what you have forgotten your mirror. You're welcome for the class. I don't know. Katie, I don't know what you mean. Do we have to make it the same color as the mittens on the snowman? You can choose whatever colors you want. 
you're not tied to these colors. So I made both my scarf and my mittens the same color. You don't have to do that. You can you can make them however you want, okay? Um, let's see. I was just fixing something that was bothering me. Okay. Um, you're welcome and thank you for all the compliments. Okay, so now we're gonna move on. We are going to get some detail for this hat, okay? Um, you don't have to make the, the hat gray. I liked doing the hat gray because it didn't take away from the color pop that we had with the mittens and the scarf. Um, and it didn't take away from that, but if you wanted to make it a different color, you can totally do that. Um, oh, Sherry, I'm sorry that your car broke down. Um, yes, you can access this from the beginning after class. So class will end around six. What time is it right now? It, about 10 minutes. Yeah, about 10 minutes. Um, 10 to 15 minutes, um, this class is going to end, and then you can access the full class from the beginning right on the page. And then on Wednesday, I will be uploading it to my YouTube for everyone who doesn't want to watch it on Facebook and it's kind of like the edited version. Um, okay, so for this, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of black, a little bit of white, mix that together. I'm using a small brush, just one of the smaller brushes I have. I'm not going to say what size it is because honestly, it doesn't matter because whatever small brush that you have. <laughs> um, and I'm making I'm making a medium medium to dark gray. I'll show you here in a second once I get it. Okay, medium to dark gray. Let's see. Hello. Focus. Okay. So I have my medium to dark gray right here. Okay. I have a darker gray that I'm gonna mix right here, but I want I want the lighter gray right now. Okay, so I have medium to dark gray, and I'm going to stipple. What is stippling, do you ask? Stippling is when you um, you go up and down on whatever surface it is. So stippling, I'm going to use my brush, stipple it on the on the um, on the palette first to kind of break up the bristles. So now my bristles look like this. Focus. Okay, so see my, how my bristles are kind of apart a little bit. You can't really see it because my, it's, you know, I have dark paint on there. But, um, so stipple it a little bit on your palette. Get the bristles to um, be apart. And then you're going to stipple everywhere where there's gray. Um, is it okay if I zoom in? Is everybody caught up? Um, I don't remember your name, um, but somebody was catching up, so I don't want to zoom in if you're still using the background as reference. Ah. Maha, are you, in a way, caught up so that I can zoom in? I don't want to take it away from you. All right, so we're just going to continue to stipple and add the gray color. Okay, perfect. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Whoops. Yeah. Down. Okay. Look at that. I love this. I love this camera, guys. This is amazing. For anyone who painted with me before, you'll, you'll know. You'll know why this is exciting. If not, that's okay. But it's exciting for me. <laughs> All right. So um, choose which side you want it to be light. Um, I kind of gave um, one side a little bit lighter. I put my shadow over on the left side. Even though the, 
the light is technically coming from the back. There's still light in the front. So choose which direction. I kind of have my light coming from um, this direction. So coming from the top right corner. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of the darker gray on the left side to kind of give a little bit of a gradient just so it's not all one color. Um, what do you do if you if I have pastel gray, like the color pastel gray, so you're not like mixing it? You can use that gray. Um, ready for the eyes, nose, and mouth. Awesome. Okay, we're almost there. Um, so you're going to do it on the sides as well. You'll just add your light gray, your dark gray. It's kind of like the flaps that come down a little bit. And I give just a little bit of um, shadow when I come down over here. Nikki, I'm sure your snowman is just as cute. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to use this time to fill you in. Um, so if you're painting along with me, I don't know if you, you might have noticed, but I love seeing everybody's painting. It gives me such joy. Um, so if you are painting along, please take a picture after we're done. Um, and so that I can see it because usually in normal classes when we're all in person I can you know take a picture of everybody's and I can see it and um, that's like one of my favorite parts of doing paint nights is being able to see everybody's paintings and everybody gets the same instruction but everybody has different ideas and does different things and it's just so fun to get to see everybody's paintings at the end um, and I know a lot of other people love that too um, so if you're painting along definitely take a photo at the end um, and in the new year, it's my goal, it's my goal to, um, can we stipple the hat brim? Yes, we will be stippling with a very, very light gray. Um, so in, in 2021, it's my goal to get a Facebook group up and running um, that's connected to my page so that everybody who paints with me um, and loves my classes and things like that can just all be in that same group. Um, and we can all share our artwork in there versus just on the page. Uh, versus just on the event page. So I'm stippling with some very light gray just to give texture. Stippling with some very light gray on the brim of the hat as well as on the ball. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, hopefully you can see that, okay? And then if, if at any point you have too much, like you put too much on there, just stipple it again, but with white. You can, you can always come back in with white and kind of lighten it back up if you put too much gray on there. So I'm not stippling on the top, I'm just stippling on the lower part of it. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, if you're at a place where you can, you can add just a little bit of, um, add a little bit of shadow on the face. or on other places. I have barely anything on my brush. Okay. We're gonna go on to the face. We're almost done, so stay with me. We're almost done. Um, we're gonna do two things. 
So first thing, we're going to take whatever color we want for the <coughs> sorry for the eyes. So originally I did blue and then a black dot in the middle. Um, I think I'll do the same thing, but the only blue I have out is the phthalo blue, and that would be really dark. So I'm going to mix it real quick with some of my white. Um, and you can do this blue dot um, or whatever color you want for the eyes. Um, you can do it with the your smallest brush, or you can, um, or you can use the back of your brush. Up to you. I'm gonna go in the middle here, just so I can see where it is. I'm gonna use my brush. And this is like the focus of the painting, so don't rush it. If you need to take your time with these eyes, like, take your time. Uh, the app that I'm using is called Streamlabs, OBS Streamlabs. And it's not really, it's not really an app, it's like a, it's a computer program. Yes, uh, you can use any, any color. I'm using blue, um, but you can use any color. I like blue because it kind of stands out a little bit and it's a little bit lighter than, um, it's a little bit lighter than, Brown, at least the brown that I have. I'd have to like mix up a whole nother color. So, okay. And for the nose, you can use orange or you can use red. I originally used red because I don't know, it's different. Different than the typical um, orange nose. And with this, you could also do orange using this, but with this red, um, I dipped it in the red. So for the, there's like a little blush on there. And I tell you, you don't have to do this. But if you would like to try it, we're going to do a dry on dry brush technique. So you're going to take your brush, the small brush that you have, you're going to get a little bit of red on your brush. And then you're going to wipe it off. And now I have the tiniest bit of red on my brush, but it's it's dry, okay? And I'm just going to barely touch the um, the snowman, and I'm going to kind of blend it out. And it gives a nice rosy cheek. I'm going to I'm going to tell you that again the process for that. It's a dry and dry brush technique. You're going to put a little bit of paint on your brush, wipe it off, wipe it all off on a paper towel. Wipe it off. And then you're going to have like residue almost. Barely touch it. See where you're at. If it's barely coming off, you're at a good place. Okay, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you totally don't have to. This is for those wanting to either learn a new technique or push themselves or if you have time to. But you are going to want to do it before you put on the mouth. Okay. Um, last part here, we're going to put a little nose. Almost like little Rudolph, Rudolph vibes. Get in here.
Now I want to sing. Okay. Love the pink scarf. Thank you. My hair looks so shiny. It's probably just the lights. And it's clean. I washed it this morning, but probably the lights. Okay. This thing is in my space. Why is it in my space? Okay. Um, I think, I think that our smile is the very last thing. Um, obviously you can always do touch-ups and you can really change anything else. Um, for the smile, we're going to be using our smallest brush, okay? You want the consistency of paint to be pretty creamy. Um, so like liquid foundation creamy. If you're using the craft paint, you'll probably need to use a little bit of water, but not much. If you're using the normal paint, um, you'll use a little bit more water. You want it to be um, creamy. And then how what I do to um, get a point to my brush, let's say I'm using either an old brush or maybe a lower quality brush, I'm going to twist my brush as it's coming off. So here, here we go. I'm going to twist my brush. So essentially the opposite of stippling it. So stippling it, we want the bristles to all come apart. Here we want them all to be together. So now you can see I have very, very thin tip and that's because I'm twirling it as I come off. Okay, so now you're just going to go from cheek to cheek. Well, I kind of like that, it's like half smile. You go and then you'll just you'll just do a little little dot we'll do a little dot in the middle here I'm gonna use the back of my I'm gonna use the back of my um brush for the little dot And then the last thing you want to do to make it a little cute is to give a little glimmer in the eye. Which you're just going to take some of your white. Bye for everyone. Bye everyone who's done. Um, there's a couple more tidbits real quick before everyone heads out. There's just the, let's see, I'm actually out of white. So you're going to add white. I would do it in maybe the top, maybe right corner of the eye, kind of like where that, where the sun or whatever is coming from. Do a little dot, just like that, and as you can see it, a little white, and then for anything, for any um, light that you want to add, you can add white on the scarves, the mittens. All sorts of things. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of class. Thank you everyone for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Um, if you would like to donate, that'll all go towards the LPA ch uh, chapter for this um, for this month. Uh, that information is right there. Actually, it's over there. My Venmo, my Cash App, um, all my links to my my Patreon, my YouTube, everything else is in the link next to me. And um, yeah, how do you tip if you're from Canada? Um, I think it still works the same if you have a Venmo app or a cash app. Um, I also have a PayPal if you want to do that. Um, Samantha Anderson artist at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. We have a class in two weeks. If you want more information on that, just go to my Facebook and it'll be in the events. But yeah. Okay. 
Bye, everyone.